So guys, in the last video, we talked about ionic and metallic bonding. Today, we're going to talk about covalent. So we're left with one thing. And, and of all this, we, we've talked about this before. In this case here, covalent bonds, aren't they always between what? Nonmetals and nonmetals. So it's just guys up upper right of the periodic table, uh, but also including hydrogen. So that's covalent bonding. And the key thing is the electrons are being shared. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw like some structures. It's all about electrons, all right? So let's do chlorine, all right? So chlorine, if you recall, has seven valence electrons. Again, let me knock you out for a second. Chlorine right here. Chlorine in column 17, seven valence electrons. Now notice what Mr. D has just done, is he's put seven dots. They represent the seven valence electrons. But it turns out that chlorine, when it's by itself, is never just Cl. He would connect with another chlorine. Now notice that Mr. Dimitrich is putting Xs next to him, just to represent the electrons from the second chlorine. Now, what's going on? So these two, these two atoms, are either of them happy with seven? No, they need eight. Eight's they the need magic eight, number. Right? Yeah. So if this chlorine comes up to this chlorine and like, hey, give me your electron, what is this chlorine going to say? So this chlorine, he's not happy. He wants one more. So he'd like to steal the one from the chlorine. So if I want to steal it from you, what do you say? I don't think so. Because wait, we're both of the same strength. Yeah, Electronegativity, we, we learned earlier, is how we're fighting for the electron. We're fighting for the electron. I and we're fighting, we're fighting. So we, we're both of the same strength, so we have to share. Yeah, and this is a kind of a last resort, but the reality is, is that if I can share this, then yeah. I'm going to claim ownership. And by the way, we talked about this before, the toddler principle of ownership. So whenever we have a covalent bond, this sharing that goes on in the middle, it's really claimed ownership. So this guy right now, it's kind of like the Venn diagram we used to do. Yeah, yeah. So this guy right here, this chlorine, not only does it claim the seven that it has, but also claims this one as part of its own. And vice versa for the other guy. Now, the way we represent this overlap where they're sharing electrons is we draw a line. So a line represents two electrons shared between two atoms. Write that down. That's actually what we call a single bond when two electrons are shared between two atoms in a covalent bond. Now, so we can have a separate instance, right? What happens if we do a different one? Let's do oxygen. So let's take a look at oxygen. Oxygen is even farther from being happy because... He's only got six because he's in column 16. Again, we can look at this, right? Here's oxygen, column 16. He's got six electrons. He's not happy at all. He's really unhappy. But we can put him next to another oxygen who also has six. Now, how are we going to make them happy? So in the reality, don't they both need two? Yeah, yeah. Two so, so here's the thing. Every time I share, and this is kind of a godly principle, right? Every time I share something with you, I'm actually getting something back. Yeah. So if I share, if this guy shares an electron and this guy shares one in, that creates two that there are being shared between them. So this guy right here, that creates a bond. Yeah. Then these two can share as well, and that creates another bond. Remember, each bond is just two electrons that are being shared. And now what we have is a double bond. And a double bond, write this down, is four electrons or two pairs of electrons shared between two atoms represented by those two lines. But remember, those two lines isn't a line. It's two or four electrons, depending on which type of a bond you have. And then there's a third one. I'm going to do nitrogen here. And nitrogen is even worse, worse he's, off. He's only got five. Bad boy. Sorry. Five, 15. So he's got five. He's really unhappy. He needs three more. But if you put two nitrogens together. I'm going to do X and yeah, just keep it yeah, standard. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter where these electrons are. but you can share more than one or two. You can you actually can share. You do the circle thing. So sometimes what I do is I do this, and I grab. He wants three more. Mm -hmm. And then this bad boy wants three more, too. And then in the intersection, how many electrons are there? Now there's three that are being shared. Yeah, because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six electrons is three pairs. And this is what we call a triple bond. There is no such thing as a quadruple bond. Is there isn't. And the other thing is, is that you need to be aware of here is that whenever you have a single bond, single bonds are predominantly weaker than double bonds, predominantly weaker than triple bonds. And part of that reason is because of how long they are. A single bond, it's kind of like this. If I, I mean, this COVID restrictions have be damned, right? Uh, this right here is me, shape, me showing a single bond, right? Yeah. So I have the freedom to stretch out as much as I want. But let's say we do a double bond, and now we're locked in, and now we don't have the ability to get around or go anywhere else. And then triples. Is Triple, the, yeah, we don't we even want to talk through that. Or locking legs or whatever. So we just get tighter and tighter every time that we draw another. So on this one, we notice that we've got Cl, and we could write this, when we write this as a formula, it's Cl2. This is O2, and this is N2. So it turns out that there are some covalent compounds, whenever you see them by themselves, they are always by themselves. And the way to remember this is it's, Say this, Mr. Brinklehoff. Can you say that, Mr. Brinklehoff? Mr. Brinklehoff. Brinklehoff. Who? Mr. Brinklehoff. 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 All of those, when they're by themselves, 
are, we call, what's the word fancy? Diatomic. They always exist. Di means two. Atomic means two atoms. Two atoms. So we're in each one of these, when you write them by themselves. Cr2, I2, N2, Cl2, H2, O2, N2. Mr. Brinkelhoff. Now, also, there's a way to look at this on the periodic table. There's, by the way, seven Brinkelhoffs. And if you look at the periodic table here, it's N O F. C L B R I. Do you notice that looks like a seven? So N O F C L B R I, and you have the addition of Mr. Hydrogen too. So it's not like there's six in that and one here, but that's another way to remember it. So if you ever are asked to react with oxygen or react with chlorine, you never write C L. You write C L two or B R two or whatever it might be. And even if we didn't understand this, like we probably haven't learned about Brinkelhoff. I mean, when we talk about oxygen, you see it in movies, or whatever else. It's always O two. Yeah. You never hear someone saying, "Give me some O." No, oh, give me some O2. O2. All right. We'll catch you on the next video. Indeed. See you then.